Welcome back everyone. We're going to begin the appendicular muscles section of biology 223. This will be the second and last uh, video for your guys' practical. So just important note, uh, the first and third practicals do have three lectures of material. This one only has two. So this will be the last one and next week will be your guys' review week. We're going to start off with the arm and we're going to start from the top and work our way down. First off is our deltoid muscle. So this is just that giant shoulder muscle and you can take it off on these models which we are going to. <clears throat> Next up we have the coracobrachialis. For that you're going to want to look on the inside of the model. There's this really tiny strip that runs along the course of these vessels right here. So that's usually how I identify I identify the coracobrachialis is those nerves and artery are running right along it. Next up is the teres major. Remember, minor's always over major. So the teres major is going to be this strip right here. Next up, we're going to go through the rotator cuff. We have the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus just below it. So if you guys remember, this is your scapular spine. Supra means above, so supraspinatus is above the spine, infraspinatus just below the spine. Subscapularis, we're going to look on the inside to that subscapular fossa on the inside. And then the teres minor is going to be this really little strip just above the teres major. So make sure you check that out in lab. It gets a little bit more clarification on that. For the biceps brachii and the triceps brachii, we're going to skip a lot of those. Uh, just a couple quick notes that might be helpful for you to identify certain things in lab. Biceps brachii short head is more medial. Biceps brachii long head is more lateral. So remember, long head, lateral. Uh, you can take off the biceps brachii and you can see there's a, like a separation. So you would have two separate heads for the bicep brachii. So that's why we want you guys to go over that. Next up, the triceps brachii. Next to lateral head, it's just the lateral one. The long head is the biggest one. And then the medial head is a really, really tiny one and it's kind of more inferior on the arm. Or uh, distal, I guess, is a more appropriate term. So make sure you guys take a look at those. Next up, for the brachialis, what you do is you take the biceps brachii, you reflect it or take it off, and the brachialis is this one that has the nerve running through it. And then the brachioradialis is next up. That's going to be this muscle on the forearm. It's the biggest muscle on the forearm. And this is usually where we have you guys start when we have you go over the muscles of the forearm because there's so many of them. So we have the brachioradialis right here. Moving to the other page for our forearm rotation, we have the pronator teres. It's this strip of muscle right here. I usually tell my students it kind of makes like a Y with the brachioradialis. So this is the brachioradialis and this is the pronator teres. Makes a Y with that muscle. Next up we have the supinator. For that you're going to reflect the brachioradialis. Just take it off and it's this sliver just underneath it. So for a supinator it's deep to the brachioradialis so you have to take off that piece in order to see it. And for the anconius, you guys are going to want to look for that on the adult arm. I think it's way easier to see on that one, and you guys can take a look at that in lab on your own time. <clears throat> now we're going to start going over our flexors and extensors. We're going to start at the brachioradialis, and we're going to work our way medial. So we have the brachioradialis and the pronator teres right here. Next up, right here, we have the flexor carpi radialis. So it's just next to the pronator teres. Next up is the palmaris longus. It's a muscle that sits right on top and it goes to your palm. So you can see the strip that goes all the way down into the hand it starts right here. Just deep to that, we have the flexor digitorum superficialis. You can see two strips of that just on either side of the palmaris longus. So it's just underneath it, just deep to it. And then last one for our flexors is going to be our flexor carpi ulnaris. So your ulna is the bone that goes to the pinky, so the flexor carpi ulnaris is going to be on your flexor side going to your pinky. Everything on the inside of your form is going to be a flexor, everything on the outside is going to be an extensor. Okay, now we're going to work our way around even more to the extensor side. Starting off, we have the 
extensor carpi ulnaris. We have the extensor digitorum. If you think about it, <clears throat> that's the muscle that contracts when you extend your digits. So you can almost kind of feel it contract if you do this. So go ahead and take a second and try that and see what it feels like. That's the extensor digitorum right there. Next up, several sets of muscles, all very confusing. We have the extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, the abductor pollicis longus, and the extensor pollicis brevis. So I'm gonna try my best for this one. We have the brachioradialis right here. We have the extensor carpi radialis longus. The extensor carpi radialis brevis is that little tinier strip. We have the abductor pollicis longus, and then the extensor pollicis brevis just underneath that. So, extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis. Longus, brevis, longus, brevis. I usually try to teach my students that. This is almost always most missed for this practical. Just remember longus, brevis, longus, brevis, and then you can kind of go from there, and that'll help you out for those. All right, next up, we're gonna work our way to an adult leg to go over a lot of the glutes and things like that. So, <clears throat> starting from the top, we have our gluteus maximus. It's this big one on the back. Next to it, we have the gluteus medius. Yeah, you guys are gonna find in lab, these models are gonna fall apart all the time. So gluteus medius right here. Next up, we have the gluteus minimus. The minimus doesn't go all the way up to the iliac crest like the medius does. So if that kind of helps you identify in lab, the gluteus medius goes all the way up to the iliac crest. The gluteus minimus does not. So it stays kind of further down. And then just below that, we have the piriformis. Kind of looks like a little triangle. It's just inferior to the gluteus minimus. Next up, a couple that I want to show on the adult leg. We're going to flip this around. Right here, this muscle that's kind of going towards the pubic symphysis is going to be our pectineus. A couple others I want to show you guys. We have the psoas major up here. It's this big strip that's running up. We have the iliacus sitting in that iliac fossa. And then the iliac psoas is right here. It's where the iliacus and the psoas major meet. So you can see the psoas major and the iliacus come down, come past the iliac, or the, um, that's the pectineal line, and they come down into here where they meet, and that's the iliac psoas. So <clears throat> that's ways you can be tested on some of those structures on the adult leg. For the remainder of them, we're going to look at the baby leg. So kind of going back to the top, a couple we missed. We have the iliotibial tract. It's this connective tissue gray sheath on the side of the leg. Uh, a lot of people know this as the IT band. Just know you cannot write IT band on your quizzes or practicals. You have to write iliotibial tract. Just above that, we get to the tensor fascia latte. So this sits right on top of the IT band. Lots of TAs usually make a joke like, oh, it's every white girl's favorite muscle. I don't think that's very funny, but I mean, if that helps you remember it, all the power to you. Next up, we're gonna come to the inside of the thigh, the medial side, for a couple other structures. Starting off, the most medial of them is going to be the gracilis. So it's this muscle running along. And then we have two muscles, anterior and posterior to that. These are the adductor longus, which is anterior, and the adductor magnus, which is posterior. So just be really careful with that. People get these mixed up a lot. Adductor longus is anterior, adductor magnus is posterior. So as minor, you guys are going to find on a giant board model that your TA can show you, it sits right on top of the psoas major. So definitely check that out once you come into lab. <clears throat> That's all we're going to do for that. Now we're going to move into the lower leg. And we're not going to go over every single one of these terms, so just be prepared for that. We have the quadriceps muscles. These are the muscles that sit on top of your thigh, the anterior side of your thigh. We have the rectus femoris that sits right on top. And then we have three vastuses underneath it. So I just reflected the rectus femoris. We now have the vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, 
and vastus lateralis. So hopefully that's pretty easy to understand. Medialis is medial, lateralis is lateral, intermedius is kind of just in the between the two. But you have to reflect the rectus femoris in order to see that. <clears throat> Next up we have the quadriceps tendon. Hopefully you guys remember that from the last section. That's this tendon right here, just above the patella. Next up we have the sartorius. That's this strip that starts up here and kind of wraps around. So very characteristic muscle. Usually everyone knows what this is pretty easy. I don't think I've ever had someone get this wrong on a practical because it's such a unique muscle and that it kind of wraps around the course of the leg. Next up, we're going to talk about our hamstrings coming to the back of the thigh. Starting off, <clears throat> we have the semitendinosus, which is more medial, and the semimembranosus, which is just underneath it. So when you guys come into lab, you'll see this muscle right here. There's kind of a separation in the two. The semitendinosus is on top, the semimembranosus is on bottom, and that's more medial. Next up is the biceps femoris. That's more lateral, so you can see there's two strips of muscle right here that look pretty similar. Biceps femoris is more lateral. We have the long head, which is superficial and lateral, and then we have the short head, which is more deep and lateral. So those are going to be your hamstrings. We're not going to talk a lot about the lower leg. There's a lot of structures that you guys can probably find pretty easily on your own. But a couple I do want to bring up, because <coughs> they are often most missed, is just remember certain things like the tibialis anterior. This is the extensor side of your leg, so extensor digitorum longus, fibularis longus, and fibular, fibularis brevis. Coming to the back of the leg, we have the gastrox, all that good stuff. So just make sure you're familiar with all of that. A couple quick things I do want to mention, <clears throat> the inside of the gastroc is going to be the soleus. My TA was like, oh, like the soleus is on the back of the gastroc, so it's like a soul fish. Like, look at it, it looks like a fish. I don't think that's very funny either, but I mean, that kind of helped me remember because of how ridiculous it was, so hopefully that helps you too. And then one other term I want to talk about that you guys are probably going to have some difficulty finding is the plantaris. So for the plantaris, I'm holding the gastrocnemius in my hand right now. I've just taken it off. The plantaris is this little baby muscle that's attached to this plantar tendon. So you guys can see this tendon that's running up the leg. There's a little tiny strip of muscle just above it and that is how we test the plantaris versus like the popliteus which is just this muscle on the back of the leg and the tibialis posterior would be right there. All right guys, that's gonna conclude this week's video. Don't forget to look at those origins and insertions. You guys are definitely gonna to need to know those for your practical. When you guys are working with models, again, we really appreciate it if you just wear gloves. And when you're done with lab, please always put the muscle models back together. So good luck this week, guys. And I will see you in a couple weeks when we begin the nervous system.